Aloha, and welcome to How to Work a Conference to Make It Work for You. I'm Katherine Fulford from the University of Hawaii, and with me is Adam Tanari Jr., my design assistant. This is part five of a five-part series, and this part is presentation delivery. And today we'll be talking about professionalism, mental, visual, and moral support, presentation skills, teamwork, and good design. First, professionalism. It's important that you create a professional impression, especially how you dress. You want to show your enthusiasm by making positive remarks. But also, avoid making statements about being nervous. It just makes you more so and look less professional. In some cultures, it's appropriate to start a presentation by apologizing or downgrading yourself. But in this case, where you're making an international presentation, it's probably best not to. Mental, visual, and moral support. One of the things that I like to do before I make a presentation is to use self-hypnosis. That is, when you wake up in the morning, your brain is actually in that state. And so what you can do is you can actually visualize yourself making your presentation and being successful. This is something professional athletes use. So what you want to do is visualize your success. Don't visualize any problems or challenges. Rather than trying to be myself, I try being somebody else. In other words, I think of somebody who's a fantastic role model for me, somebody that I admire, and I think, I'm going to be that person. Another thing is to visualize each point rather than having a lot of talking without changing visuals. In this way, rather than the audience focusing on you, they're focusing on the screen. So in this way, you're using the media to support your presentation rather than using written notes. So if you plan to say it, make a slide. Don't try to memorize. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in practice in front of a mirror, making sure that all my gestures and everything were just right. Another idea is to go to your presentation room uh, before you actually have your presentation. Go to somebody else's presentation in the room that you'll be in. Actually watch what it is that they do, see how they stand, and see where the equipment is and how well it works. You can actually try to go in and rehearse with your own slides. Sometimes it's available during lunch, and that's a really good time to try. And make sure that you can see every single slide. And if you have a friend, get them to come with you and stand and make sure that they can hear your voice clearly. Make sure to test all of your equipment. Check the compatibility of your presentation with a computer that's provided. And make sure that the fonts don't change and the transitions don't change. Sometimes when this happens, your computer and your presentation are all jumbled up. If you can, use your own computer, but always make sure to bring the proper connector. It's particularly important to check the sound system. If you don't come with your own speakers, you need to prearrange this to make sure that there are speakers in the room. And if there aren't, go quickly to the audio people to make sure that they can help you. The next thing to do is to calibrate your computer to make sure that the photos and videos actually show up on the screen the way that you want them to. Again, never be caught having to apologize. Another idea is to get there early just in case. You want to try to go to the session right before yours in the same presentation room. Another great idea is to make yourself an audience. Invite others whose work you think is related to yours. So if you've been to sessions whose work is interesting, go up to the front, tell them you're making a similar presentation the next day, and ask them to come. Another idea is to bring friends. It's much nicer to present in front of other people than an empty room. And then once you're finished, bask in the glory. Learn from your mistakes, but emphasize the positive. But always take pictures. Have people take pictures of your presentation because you'll be using those later. Delivery. You really want to try to learn good delivery techniques. 
If you don't know what I mean by this, you might try going to a voice class or try your local Toastmasters organization to learn how to speak well. One of the things that you really want to do is to make your voice exciting and dynamic, but also pleasant. You want to make sure that everyone in the room can hear you. There's a technique called throwing your voice. In other words, rather than yelling, what you want to do is to try to fill the room with your voice. You want to make your presentation physically dynamic and interesting. The best way to do that is to stand up when you deliver. Your voice is better and you have more interaction with the group and your body is more interactive. When you sit down, you really play that down and it's a lot harder to present. Unfortunately, when you go into many rooms, they're set up for presenters to sit. So you have to make the decision consciously that you're not going to sit behind the desk, but you're going to be out in front of it. So that's another good reason for you to go to that room early and take a look and see what you would do. Be careful when you're in the room, though, not to block the screen. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that end up rainbow-faced and casting shadows on their presentation screen. And this looks a little bit silly, I must say. It's a good idea to post your presentation slides on the AACE website ahead of time. A lot of people like to do this. It gives them sort of an advanced organizer before the presentation. It also helps you be mindful of people with disabilities because those that might not be able to see the screen very well will have it downloaded. You might also want to post a digital text outline that can be read by screen readers. Use Universal Design for Learning. This way, you're helping not only people with disabilities, but people from other countries who may have difficulty in seeing or hearing your presentation. Be careful of reading long passages on the screen. Your audience may find this habit frustrating and boring. People can read twice as fast as you can speak. Say, let me give you a moment to read this screen, and this is a good opportunity to take a sip of water and breathe. Your pacing will be better and more relaxed, and your audience will love you. Except you must know your audience. Use the Americans with Disabilities guidelines. For example, read text aloud, provide large print handouts, or post slideshows with annotations. A good way to find out is to ask the entire group, can everybody see this screen? Would anybody like me to read this? and then all of your audience will love you. Teamwork. Make sure your presentation is concise enough to allow all your team members to present in your allocated time. You want to avoid expanding or elaborating unnecessarily. Make sure to pay attention to body language for signals. Other presenters are often in the same room, and you'll see them start to shift and be uncomfortable if you start to move into their time period. Also, pay attention to the signals if there is a timer in the room. Be careful not to take over someone else's planned time or planned role. And never let anyone trade presentation times with you. I had a couple of bad experiences with this. One is when we came in the room, a fellow asked us, he said, I am very nervous, do you mind if I go first? And we said, oh, okay, we will. But then he proceeded to talk and talk and talk and talk. And finally, about 10 minutes into our presentation time, I finally had to say, excuse me, but we really need to present. We don't have much time left. So always go at your prescribed time. And remember that going over your time limit erases all the good work you've done. Good design. Good design is invisible. You must organize, visualize, practice, perform, and then evaluate. And when you evaluate, think about how you'll do it better next time. Good design will increase the level of trust your audience has in you. It will increase their perceptions of your knowledge. It will increase your image of professionalism. And best of all, it will increase your own confidence. Aloha and mahalo. This is the last of our five-part series. So I'd love to see you out there presenting. Enjoy your travels.